In this video, I'm doing a position analysis from an early game position. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies, is now available. There's a link in the description where you can get where you can get the book. I am offering lessons. If you're interested, please email me. My email address is in the description. So we're going to look at a position from the early game. So this is how it started. Uh, Blue rolled a 2-1 and played like this, resulting in this position. And then white rolled a double three. Correctly played by bringing two checkers up and making the five point. Uh, one of the, the normal, the default play for a double three second roll is to bring two up and two down. However, when there's a blot here, um, it's actually better to make the five point because you can make an additional point. And um, there's a, there's, although there's a blot out here, there's also a blot out here. Then the next roll was a six one for blue. So this is the position we're going to look at. Look at this position. Think about how you would play it. Pause the video if you like, and then we'll look at the analysis in a moment. Okay, so when I played this, I quickly played, I said I want to cover cover this five point and I can do that with the six or the one uh, so, and then the other side uh, the the other half I would play out here so I can cover with the six and then split with the one um, that's what I did that's two blots um, the alternative would be to cover with the one and then split out here that leaves three blots and a lot of hitting numbers um, however um, I looked at the hitting play but I didn't really consider it because it left one, two, three, four blots against a two-point board versus a one-point board um, and a blot in the board. Uh, I just felt it was too much. However, this is the analysis. It turns out that the hitting play was correct. This is how it is from 24 to 17, putting a checker on the bar, and it looks like this. The play I made was this, and that turns out to be an error. And the resulting position looks like this. So why? Basically, every move you make, you want to think about what's going to happen in the future. What's the probability of something happening, and what's the probability of something not happening? So what you want to think about is, what are your opponent's productive roles after one play, and see if they're as productive after the second play. So this is the equity heat map for the hitting play at the upper left. And then the second play that I did, it was actually the third best on the upper right. And the difference is on the lower left and it's plotted in the histogram. You see rolls with fours and sixes like four, two, six, four, six, one, and double six are the biggest swings. So Look what happens when you when you hit when you don't hit the a four two can make the four point and the three point board six four can point on ahead six one can make the bar point double six can make two good points uh, whereas after the hitting play they become bad so let's look at those so this is what four two plays like for white after hitting white would be coming in with the four and then down with the two. If you didn't hit, now white would be able to make the three-point board, consolidate the blot, and have a strong position. With a 6-4, white will be forced to come in uh, with a bad six from the bar. If you after the after the incorrect play, now 6-4 would point on head. 6-1 is another number that would otherwise have been productive. White would have to come in and then play the six down 13 to seven. Otherwise, after the other play, white would make the bar point. That would be a nice blocking point for these two back checkers over here. And white would have a strong position. Now let's look at some variance because 
with the original position, the blot was here. So when you hit with the 6-1, uh, white needs, needs fives to hit here and fives to come in. So that would have duplicated the fives. I just moved it back one and changed the roll to 6-2 because now hitting would not duplicate the hitting fives. He would, he would be able to hit with fives over here and fours on this side. It turns out that now the hitting play is an error because you're not duplicating. Um, and this was the other one that um, didn't look at double six from the bar. Obviously, you cannot move. But after the, the other play, the double six would have come out and made the 15 point and made the bar point and gained a lot in the race. This was the other option um, for the six two. Now it's correct to make the five point and split. Looking like this. This would have been an error, and this is what it looks like. And here, uh, the fives are not duplicated. So um, that's part of the reason why it's better to just split and cover in this case. So some of the tips for the early game, look at your opponent's play after, how your opponent's roles play after one option like we did, and see how those same roles play after another option. So when we made the safe play, white had good rolls like 4-2, 6-4, 6-1, and double six. But after the other option of hitting, those rolls played terribly, especially double six, of course, which dances all together. So see how they play after the second option. If you can put a, a checker on the bar, consider the dancing numbers and sixes from the bar. Usually the six point is closed, so they cannot come in with the six. They would have to use the six elsewhere. Um, and oftentimes the sixes are bad. So uh, you'll look for bad sixes from the bar and then study the dice distribution. Um, it is on XG. Uh, you can uh, highlight the two plays and press Control Shift D for dice distribution and see how they play. The Excel file that I use is a little bit more labor intensive, but it gives a little bit more information that's easier to see. But all the information is available on XG. So those are the tips for the early game. And that was the position analysis from the early game position. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies, is now available. There's a link in the description to where you can buy it. I am offering lessons. If you are interested, please email me. My email address is in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, Keep rolling your dice.